guys hope you're well out there today welcome back to another video if uh, you haven't already and you dig my content please like and subscribe it helps me out a great deal in creating future content now today's video is all about this guitar this is an FGN Odyssey standard and it's uh, the guitar I've used in a lot of my videos and I've had a few questions about it so I thought instead of retyping all the time I'd do a quick sort of demo and review of this thing I'm in no way affiliated with FGN guitar so this will be an honest look uh, I'll give you some pros and cons and some sound samples, so let's get into it. So I wanted to make sure for this video I was quoting the specs exactly right and when I've had a look on the website they've actually changed the specs of this model uh, assumedly for this year's run. Uh, so I will quote you the specs of mine as I remember them. Basswood body, maple neck, that's still the same. This is a rosewood fingerboard. I'm pretty certain it's a rosewood fingerboard. On the new one, I've had to write this down because <laughs> on the new one apparently it's a Grandadillo. Grandadillo. Uh, fingerboard on the newer models pretty sure this is rosewood um, pickup wise this one has a Duncan JB uh, SSL 1 I think I've been saying SSL 5 in the other videos so ignore that I know what I was talking about really um, and this is a classic stack in the neck so a noiseless stacked single coil uh, in the new spec I've got it over here it's a Duncan Pegasus in the bridge uh, SSL 1 still in the middle and then neck is an Alnico 2 Pro all Duncans again um, other than that I think the specs are fairly similar uh, we've got a 10 to 14 compound radius fretboard um, and they've got this thing that's called I think it's called the circular fretting system so it's pretty much invisible to the naked eye if I'm honest so who knows if it actually makes a difference but the frets are actually laid in at a very slight curve and it's supposed to help with intonation and things. Um, I mean, I it must be doing something because I really like this guitar. Um, so, modifications that I've done to this one. Uh, I've replaced the tuners. These are now Goto locking tuners. They were Goto's before, but unlocking. Um, I have... <laughs> glow in the dark tape on the side of this guitar because I use it for a couple of shows well I did before all this coronavirus stuff use it for a couple of shows where uh, the stage goes full black out a few times and the lights don't come back on until the song kicks in so it's not that the inlays on the side aren't visible uh, under normal situations but I needed that on there um, this is just a little pick holder on here you can put in uh, spare picks so if I'm away from uh, you know grabbing them I can just rock and roll um, <laughs> another modification that I made is I actually replaced the saddles on the stock bridge with the uh, graph tech string savers um, I found the stock saddles I popped a few more strings than I'd like it wasn't regular I mean I'm a pretty uh, I break a lot of strings <laughs> I've changed out these knobs uh, just for appearance and then as stock this switch splits the bridge humbucker uh, in every position but I always I never use the bridge tap so this switch now is set up so it will coil tap the bridge only in this position so when it's the two pickups together um, other than that uh, I've got a treble bleed on the volume pot I think I actually changed out the pot I can't remember what it comes with but I didn't find the taper particularly smooth uh, the trem on this is their own branded one, but I think it's possibly an OEM Goto 510. Very, very similar. Uh, but, I mean, it feels great. It feels great. And then in the back, I've just got three springs, and I've got some foam in between them just to stop the rattle. 
I am going to install a Tremel no on here as well. Also, there is a nice cutaway here, very similar to the Fender Deluxe uh, models, and it just lets you get your hand down there a bit more for upper fret access. Fret access, indeed. Um, so yeah, let's get into some sounds now. This is a clean, clean sound. Uh, and then I, what I'll do is I'll just play a couple of chords and cycle through the positions for you. So we'll start in the neck. So uh, in all of these clips, I'm going to have the bridge coil tapped for the in-between sounds. I just think it's a bit more authentic and obviously it's a sound you can get from stock anyway. So that's clean, clean. Um, let's just do a bit more playing. So again, starting with the neck, something a bit more with a bit more, you know. <coughs> Moving over to just a little bit of light crunch now, again starting with the neck pickup. So now we've got more of a Marshall style crunch, starting with the neck pickup. It's something with a bit more gain and balls just to have a listen to the bridge humbug. <laughs> I have been a Les Paul player most of my life and sometime last year I was craving a Strat uh, and I actually needed it for some work I had coming up. But I just couldn't find anything I really bonded with. I went out and tried a load of stuff and the favourite was definitely Sir Guitars but I just didn't have the budget for it. At the time it was sort of looking like it had to be under a grand. So obvious choices were the Ibanez AZ and the Charvel DK24 I want to say it is. The HSS model. Um, I like them both. Uh, the Ibanez AZ definitely won out of the two. It had a really chunky neck and it had the sort of roasted maple thing, which feels really good under the hands. But at the time, there was only one in stock that I could find in the UK and it was over a grand. Uh, and so I continued to shop around a little bit. Um, and Coda Music in Steve, I think Stevenage, 
Uh, it's a great little shop if you haven't checked it out. Not really nice staff in there. Uh, I drove up with a friend, Mr. Joe Green, um, and spent the day playing all kinds of guitars. And this was what I actually went up for. I found it online. And I just thought the specs on paper and the sort of look of the thing uh, really made me want to check it out. And I think it was up for around £700. Um, so went there that day, tried it out, and this was the winner out of all guitars. We tried loads in different price points and this one out over them. Obviously, price was a factor. Um, I'm not going to say this plays as good as a Sir, but for the price difference, does it play a uh, thousand to two thousand pounds worse than a Sir? Definitely not. So to round off, what are my honest thoughts on this guitar? Well, the neck is incredible. Um, it just nothing else in the shop at the time touched it for what I was after. Lovely satin finish on the back of the neck, nothing sticky, really comfortable. And I'm used to quite chunky necks, but this is a bit slimmer, but still feels very, very comfortable. The fretwork on it straight away was was excellent. The nut was cut great. Uh, I'm really glad it came with these pickups because um, I probably would have only upgraded them anyway to something similar. Duncan's Damasio's or Tone Rider, something like that. Um, the Trem, the action, super smooth. Um, rivals my favourite Trem, which is the uh, Wilkinson VS50 or 100. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, really, really cracking Trem. Um, it didn't even need much of a setup, to be honest. Couple of small gripes with it. The tuners... I think should have been locking from the outset. If you've got a two point trem and it's the more of a modern strat style guitar, you wouldn't have lost anything by putting these on as standard and it improved the tuning stability no end. Another small gripe is with this model, they have a stacked neck pickup, which is great because it cuts the hum and it sounds pretty single coily or single coily enough for me. Um, and it's great for doing gigs in theatres and things like I do when there's a lot of old electronics about and uh, there is a lot of interference. But the issue with not having a stacked pickup in the middle as well is that when you're in the in-between position, it's not hum cancelling. And that's one of my most used positions on a Strat style guitar. But it's now not hum cancelling. Um, so I think they should have either gone for stacked in both positions or standard single coils personally uh, which is obviously what they've done on the new model so perhaps that was a complaint of people uh, my only other complaint was although the volume pot was a high quality one i found the taper very odd i didn't get on with it at all so that got changed out i think they are alphas as standard and i've put a cts in there um, one thing I really like, which I'll do a quick demo of now, I hadn't thought about it earlier, let me just find a good sound, is uh, the Tone Pot has a really nice roll-off. Often with Tone Pots it's either all or nothing, but uh, this one... <laughs> A uh, possible question being asked is how well does it stay in tune? Uh, being honest with the stock machine heads, which were the split post vintage style where you poke the string in and wrap it round. Uh, not too bad, but not great. Uh, it's a bit of a mismatch to me having such a modern trem and vintage machine heads. But since I put the Goto locking ones on, uh, tuning stability is great. And that's obviously helped by having a really good cut nut, which was there to start with. And I've got the Graftec string savers down here. Uh, and my trem set up to float as well, so so this is a bit of trem abuse for you. <laughs> Really appreciate you checking this video out guys i would definitely urge you to look into fgn guitars if you don't know about them or you haven't tried them before if you like this video please subscribe to the channel it helps me out a great deal making future content 
I hope you all stay safe in this crazy corona times. Uh, I'm currently looking more and more like a extra from Castaway as the uh, time rolls on, <laughs> growing my COVID beard. But yeah, take care of yourselves, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. With the case. So knackered that all f***ing hell.